standing here with the old Quincy and Torch Lake number three that we've seen in years past. And you can see that the cab is pretty much gone. Not much left of it. Hasn't been much left of it for many years. The boiler itself is pretty bad. Not sure if it's even worth saving, as well as the frame. It's in pretty bad shape, and you've seen that in years past as well. It's a 1894 uh, Brooks built product, and their products were later incorporated into Alco when Brooks Locomotive Works was one of the eight builders that created the American Locomotive Company in 1901. So there's this and the other boiler that came with it uh, was actually a replacement for Quincy and Torch Lake number four and that's not out here right now. That's actually in the shop being cleaned up. Most likely it'll be disposed of here and uh, taken back up north. They really should take this back up north and put it in the uh, roundhouse there at the new Q&TL Historical uh, Society. Anyway, so that's uh, what's been going on with number three. As you can see, the yard tracks number five and six here uh, by the outbuilding still in place. Well, number six isn't quite complete yet been a long time coming. Uh, you can see they've gotten pretty well started here on it. A little bit more leveling to do and then you can see more pieces down here. Not sure if this is quite all that's going to happen back here but this is the total amount of clearing that's gone on over the past uh, five years or so maybe a little less than that this is always here like this but uh, there was always a bunch of trees in this area here that they've finally got all cleared out some trees and bushes and then down there is a little bit of a ravine and that all runs off into the creek that goes uh, underneath the tracks back there over another trussle. But anyway, this is uh, the extent of what's been going on so far since last year out this way. You can see the number five out there just behind uh, the other cars there. Got number 11 in the weed spare tray on the other side and number five behind it on the other track. And we got the East Broad Top uh, built, home built cars uh, right here. 103, uh, excuse me, 104, 112, and 113 all out here. Those are originally flat cars that the Huck had the uh, superstructure built on top as you've heard in years past. Car 42's in the shop. We'll go see that. Okay. So this is the difference here in 2019. Well, we're inside the locomotive shop now, and uh, some of the changes that are going on, you'll see here. Uh, we got Caboose 0526 still being used as the office uh, temporarily. So can't go inside of it. But, uh, yeah, they wanted to give us a visual of just the, the railroad here and aerial photographs. You can see this is Crossroads Village here and we got the West Loop and uh, this is the shop complex and yard area and then down this way uh, this is where the number four is over right there that clearing and then down here we got Genesee, Genesee Road, uh, got the fire hall here in the back, and then down this way, 
few more clearings, and then right there is the Barnut Creek Trust. And then the east, uh, east loop, and the, down here is the fairgrounds at the Cummings Center. And uh, I know a lot of you have asked uh, where the old east loop was, and that would be beyond the tape here. And you can see, kind of see the original right away, which is this clearing through the trees here. And they still had that it, until recently, and they redid the tracks in the yard here. They used to go down, you see a pond down here. Uh, tracks kind of went alongside that and then it branched off to a, loop, a giant loop that went around the campground that was over here Timberwolf campground which is now closed so it's very hard to access there unless you were to walk back on the uh, fairgrounds road that goes back there but yeah we got Mott Lake here that pretty much goes the entire length Mott Lake is a uh, part of the Flint River uh, that was dammed up many many years ago this is a low-lying valley and it was mostly farm fields and had dredged the mill where the river was and they just basically cut all the stumps in there and built the dam which is known as Stepping Stone Falls I wish they would have put that here but have been that's down in this corner here where it would have been uh, so yeah you get a good idea of where exactly we are here uh, just the kind of terrain the railroad runs over on the old uh, Pierre Marquette line. Uh, in the shop here, car 42 is having some brake work done. Not sure if it's going to be having any touch ups done to it or what, but uh, looks like it's pretty good shape. This area back here beyond the uh, main part of the locomotive shop is, is, uh, has been redone. There's now a small kitchen area and uh, some more lockers and it's been uh, redone so it appears to be weatherized and give a little bit more room for uh, some of the stuff that goes on here during the winter in the cold storage more like hot storage right now uh, we got 464 setting uh, way it's rebuild now that the tubes are uh, have gone out on it in a few places. I think there was like three or four of them that have gone out, and so it hasn't run since earlier this summer. And so now it's time for the rebuild. You got car eight down here in the back part in the wood shop itself is uh, is that boiler, the extra boiler that would have gone on the Quincy and Torch Lake number four. That's in there being displayed right now. So if you come out here on Sunday for the shop tour, you'll see that in there. We got 152 sitting out here beyond the picnic. This is a pretty rare sight in the wood shop here at the Huckleberry Railroad. There are no cars in here at all this year. None. So, they've finally gotten the time to bring this boiler in, this extra boiler that was supposed to go on the number three, Quincy and Torch Lake number three, which is actually a replacement for the QNTL number four back in the 19... Uh, late 1930s, early 1940s, never got done. And then when they brought it here, they realized that it won't actually fit on the frame that number three has. And the frame for it is actually pretty in pretty bad shape as it is. The boiler is actually in pretty good shape. It's brand new. Uh, it was manufactured strictly for the number four. I'm, I'm guessing that they must have ordered each engine uh, separately. I can't remember if Quincy and Torch Lake ever ordered a bunch of locomotives at once. From all the pictures I've seen, the pictures are, again, I'm going off pictures, that uh, they're all different. 260s and 280s. 
Now, I'm guessing they would have saved the smoke box from the locomotive and put it directly on here. As you can see, they would have just riveted it all into one piece and form the new boiler barrel. But you can see the tube sheets here, uh, all the way through the other side. There's a little bit, seems a little bit pitted, but I think, uh, I think uh, nice cleaning off with a uh, power brush will get those uh, nice again. You can see the tube sheet on the other side, through all the way through to the fire door. Oops. No. It's out of focus. There we go. So you get a good idea. Oh, just the type of boiler this is. This is another one with a keyhole firebox. Just like on the number two, uh, excuse me, 152. Now running. You can see they've done some markings on it. They're trying to outline here. The type of flange. So they gotta clean this off. I'm telling you, this would look good cosmetically restored. You can see in here, never used at all. I wish I had a nice flashlight to shine in there. Anyway, yeah, so this is uh, this is very weird seeing this place and no cars at all in here. It sounds like they're not going to have much in here. Maybe next year we'll see something being worked on majorly, but uh, yeah, here's, in the, here's a beam post here. Not sure if uh, what's going on car or what. It looks like another piece. They're building a building over the sawmill to make it so it's weatherproof. And uh, these are the plans for it over here. See a piece of the roof structure that's going to be going on. Uh, well, actually, this is a planer. This is where they're going to plane lumber in. But this, these are the drawings for uh, the new building that's being built over in the village. And it pretty much looks like this right now. There's no, uh, well, other than the thatch work, there's no real roof over it right now. All the posts are in place, but uh, yeah. Now all that machinery is going to be covered up, and uh, you, it will actually operate when it rains. And there's some blueprints over here for a brick station. I'm going to have to look into which one this is for. Well, this is interesting. It might actually be the Flint Depot, the original one that the Pierre Marquette built. Uh, in downtown Flint before they uh, move the main line. Looks a lot like a, bun a bunch of pictures I've seen. Anyway, a lot of, a lot of other small projects are going to be going on here in the wood shop for the next little while. We might see another car in here next year being redone, but uh, for the most part, all the cars are actually running aside from car number eight, which is uh, well, of course, it doesn't have the right kind of trucks underneath it, so we're not going to see them. I'm wondering where these windows are going. I have to ask. We have some wood here, probably going to that building in the village. There's a bunch of wood in the other side you might have seen. Uh, they're, they're supposed to be building more cars in here sometime in the future. I don't know. We'll have to see. You can better get a better look here. Okay, see there's number five, number 11 down there with the weed sprayer and then three coaches here. Bunch of flat cars and the hopper. They've done some tamping in here, got it all straightened out. As they continue down that way, uh, I'm sure more ballast will be added. I notice that this one here is a Y switch. Save a little space here. We got number three's driver's side here along with the front axle. 
the area behind here is the storage for the parks. Uh, finally got it all cleaned out and put all this together. All these different containers. I wonder if they're about done. They did, get, they did get all their vehicles parked in the back here instead of on the other side of the building. It was just kind of a mess. I got a number seven in the open air cars, 20 and 30 here. Yeah, maybe taking people down from the station to the shop complex here for the tours. And 152 uh, just sitting long simmering for the day, the rest of the day. I'll put it away later tonight. Not much going on in the, uh, in the machine shop. It's all closed off. Uh, no major projects right now, so uh, there was no need to show anybody in there this year, but uh, yeah, that's might be a good sign for right now. Nothing major going on. 464's rebuild will start uh, in probably the next couple of years. I don't think they'll start next year, but uh, they're going to try and uh, keep 152 running by itself for now. So from Crossroads Village, uh, 2019 uh, Real Fans Weekend, uh, there's your shop update.